The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Of whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York. The nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting fight against death. Blair General Hospital, whose ministry of mercy reaches out from its quiet halls to the highways and byways of a huge metropolis. Yes, sir, Doc. Many a time Kildare rode with me in this ambulance. Of course, he was just an intern then, like you, before they made him a resident. Interesting, Wayman. Well, keep your eyes on the road. Those are the police flares around the smash-up just ahead. I was unconscious when Wayman and I got there, Dr. Kildare. I couldn't bring her to. A deep shock, Morton. She's had tetanus and a toxin, of course. Yes, sir. 100,000 units. The leg looked pretty bad, so we rushed her right in. Boy, I come in from Riverdale and nothing flat. You should have seen me, Doc. <laughs> I've seen you, Wayman. Nurse. Yes, Doctor? Blood plasma. Supplement with glucose intravenous. Yes, sir. Morton, how long had she been lying there on the road? At least a half an hour, I imagine. Not much traffic out there this late at night. Too bad. Might have made a lot of difference. Know who she is? No, sir. No identification on her. Driver's license? No driver's license. No nothing, Doc. She must have been doing 70 when she met up with that tree. Hmm. Nurse, has Dr. Glassley been called? Yes, Doctor. Will you check again to see that he's on his way? Yes, Doctor. If only we could locate her family. Just to have their consent. For what? To save her life? I guess it almost amounts to that, Morton. We have to protect the hospital. When we go into surgery, we've got to have consent from either the patient or next of kin. Oh, there. You looking for me? Oh, yes, Dr. Gillespie. This girl should be operated on immediately. Uh, what's wrong with her? Circulation completely destroyed. One lesion gangrenous already. Not a chance of saving her leg. Well, then what are you waiting for? I haven't got consent. Why not? Because the patient's in no condition to sign. We haven't been able to reach her parents. Ooh, 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 ooh. Looks like we're sort of stymied, Jimmy. Yes. Um... No, we're not. That girl's going into surgery. You mean you'd amputate without consent? If it's the only way to save her life. Kildare, this girl is your patient. Thanks, Dr. Gillespie. Nurse, prepare the patient for surgery. Kildare. Good morning, nurse. Oh, well, how's our patient? Miss Northrup, the amputee? Yes. Oh, no change, doctor. Despondent, uncooperative. Apparently no desire to overcome her handicap. Mm. It's been the same for three months now. It's understandable. If I could only find someone who knows her. It's not easy for an attractive young girl to accept the loss of a leg. You mean mentally, doctor? Yes. Well, that's my problem. I'll go in and see her now. Morning, Miss Northrup. Get out. Oh, I've had the same greeting for three months. Leave me alone, Dr. Kildare. I don't want to see you. Miss Northrup. Don't you understand? I hate you. I do understand. But please, won't you tell me the name of some person you know, some of your friends? I have no friends. And if I did have, I wouldn't want to see them. 
You'll need them when you leave here. I'm not leaving here. You can't stay here forever, you know. When you're cured, you must leave to make room for some other patient. Please tell me their name. No. And leave me alone. Why won't you try to walk? Come on, I'll help Don't you. Don't touch me. You feel sorry for me. I can see it in your face. I don't feel pity for you or sympathy. All I want is to be able to close the book on your case and mark it successful. I won't be able to do that until you walk. How can you look at me and imagine that I'll ever be called a success? When I look at you, I can't think of one reason why you shouldn't be. You have youth and beauty. And on the debit side of my ledger, I have one leg. The books just don't balance, Dr. Kildare. You'll only listen to me. You can learn to forget your problem. You will forget it in time. Now, you must learn to walk. Just work with me. Give yourself a chance. A chance, Dr. Kildare. That's very funny. A chance to go swimming again. A chance to go dancing. I'd do a very graceful rumba, Dr. Kildare. I'd rather die. Nosey! Nosey, Parker! Nosey! Yes, Dr. Gillespie. Nosey, why in thunder are you always poking around here when I don't want you? And as soon as I do need you, you're off in another country. Oh. Didn't I tell you to get Dr. Kildare? He's on his way now. Well, how long does it take a man to come down fourth flight? Exactly one minute, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, oh, hello, Kildare. Get out, Nosey. Oh, yes, ma'am. Kildare? I hear you've been having trouble with that Northrop girl in four ways again. That's right. Who told you? Oh, I got my spies all over the place. Got your every move charted like a rising temperature. Don't I know. Well, Miss Northrop is difficult, all right. I've done everything to induce the proper mental outlook. Well, she certainly seems to be well enough physically and medically. I should have been leading a normal life by now. Every day she stays here makes it worse for her. Hmm. She thinks she can hide from the world for the rest of her life. You've done everything you possibly can for her? Yes. And it doesn't work. Hmm. If only there was some way I could make her have faith in me. Believe in me. Believe that what I'm doing is best for her. I think that perhaps it would be best for both of you if you got off the case. No. If Miss Northrop succeeds in disposing of me, I'll be only the first in a long succession of doctors. Hmm? That's a good analysis. Not enough to save a patient's life if you also destroy the incentive to live. Amputating that girl's leg was a delicate operation that I had to perform. But getting her to accept the fact and find the ability to cope with it is an even more delicate operation. No, Doctor. Deserting that girl now would be like walking out in the middle of an operation, leaving the patient helpless on the table. I like to hear you talk like that. If only I knew how to get to her. Win her over to my way of thinking. Must be a way. There must. You'll find it, Jimmy. You'll find it. I believe in you. Dr. Kildare calling Dr. Kildare. Report to the fourth floor immediately. Room 408. Room 408. See you later, Dr. Gillespie. in the world to see her. I know she wants to see me. You want me, nurse? Oh, Dr. Kildare. Dr. Kildare. Insisted... They told me you were her doctor. You, you've got to let me in to see her. Now, whoa, now, slow down here a minute. Who is it you wish to see? Marjorie, Marjorie Northrop. We've been engaged for over a year, now, doctor. Where have you been for the last three months? I was looking for her. Please take me to her, doctor. What's your name? Willard Mason. What's wrong with her? She'll be all right. Well, then you'll let me see her. No. Miss Northrop has issued orders that no one is to see her. And the hospital has to abide by those orders. No one will stop me from seeing her. Just tell her that Willard Mason is here, that's all. No, it's no use. I think particularly you're the one person she's afraid to see. What? Afraid to see me? Well, why? Mr. Mason, she was in an automobile accident. It was necessary to amputate her right leg. Amputate? Hmm. No, not. I don't believe you. You still want to see her? More than ever. She knows how much I love her. She must know that... What happened can't affect my feeling for her in the slightest. You might consider that what has happened may have affected her feeling for you. But at a time like this, Doctor, I... 
I should think she'd want to see me more than ever. She'd need someone to lean on. I agree with you, but I'm afraid she won't. She resents pity and sympathy. But I won't give her any. I'll, I'll just make believe that nothing's happened. I'll avoid any mention of her leg. If that's the one thing you mustn't do. It only makes it more obvious. You must try to understand what she's going through mentally. I, I'm sorry, Doctor. It's such a terrible shock. Hard to imagine, Have Marjorie. You got to Miss Northrup in 408 is flashing. Certainly, nurse. Room 408. That's where she is. Right up the hall. Yes, but no. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? Room 408. I'm going in to see her. Well, don't go in there. Don't go in there. I tried to stop him, Dr. Kildare. That's all right. We'll just wait here a minute. <laughs> Come on, nurse. <laughs> Nurse. I'll have this man removed, Doctor. Oh, no, no, leave him alone. It doesn't matter, Marge. I love you. Marge, I've always Don't loved you. Don't look at me! Don't look at me! I'm glad you told her how you felt, Miss, but I think right now it'd be best for you to leave. All right, Doctor. I will. Marge! Please, please. Yes. 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 <laughs> Miss Northrop, surely you know now that what happened to you doesn't matter to him or anyone else. He still loves you, and if you love him, that's all that matters. Oh, please, try to understand. He saw me. He saw me. Yes, he saw you, and you've lived through it. When you lose the fear that you now have of facing people, you'll have won your fight. Don't you see? I see. I see everything. You planned his coming here to humiliate me. I hate you, Dr. Kildare. I hate you. The story of Dr. Kildare will continue in just a moment. Continue with the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Dr. Gillespie's office, Nurse Parker. What? Those clinical reports on rehabilitation cases? Oh, yes. Uh, Dr. Gillespie will be sending them back to you today. Certainly. Good afternoon, Parker. Dr. Gillespie in? Oh, yes, Dr. Kildare. And is he anxious to see you? Really? Trouble, Parker? Trouble? Dr. Carew just left the office black as a thundercloud. <laughs> That's not an unusual occurrence in this office. Dr. Carew was yelling that Gillespie had better let you off that Northrop case immediately. Oh, I see. Thanks for the tip, Parker. Parker! What's all the whispering for? Oh, there. Well, come in, come in. Sit down. Sit down. Now, tell me how you're coming on with the Northrop girl. Well, Dr. Gillespie, I'm afraid I'm going to have to give up on this one. Jimmy, you don't fool me. You've never admitted defeat in your life. I haven't forgotten that Dr. Carew ordered you to take me off the case this morning. Killed him? No reason why you should get in trouble because of me. I never get in trouble. I don't need anyone wiping my nose. I'll handle my own affairs in this hospital. Just the same. I think I'd like to be relieved of the Northrop case. Mm, yeah. As a matter of fact, that fool Carew was just here. Laid down the law. Well, maybe just as well. You know who'll be taking over? Haven't assigned another doctor yet. Might drop in on the girl myself for a day or two. Good. And you can disregard all the basic mental therapeutic treatments. Huh. I've tried them. I pleaded and cajoled. I tried and appealed to reason and intelligence. I was cruel and cold. Nothing drew the slightest response. Kildare, I've removed you from the case, but I can still ask a staff member to accompany me when I visit a patient. Dr. Gillespie, I don't really know why I worried about you getting in trouble. You go looking for it. I'd be delighted to accompany you. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, how are you today, Miss Northrup? Hello, Dr. Gillespie. What is Dr. Kildare doing here? I thought he was relieved of my case. Well, now, uh, Kildare is showing me round. Until another doctor is assigned to you. It's just procedure. I have to learn all the facts. Let's say Kildare is a guest. Not my guest. Dr. Kildare saved my life when he amputated my leg. <laughs> I preferred to die. So I'm not grateful to him for what remains of me. Miss Northrop, since I'm no longer your doctor, may I just say one word as a friend? As a friend? Yes. You seem to feel you have no value in society, but believe me, you have a place. A worthwhile place, and it's waiting for you whenever you make up your mind that you're ready. The sooner, the better. Dr. Gillespie, make him get out. I don't have to listen to him now, do I? Certainly not. Well, you heard the young lady. What? Kildare, I'm beginning to get the impression that you were derelict in your duty. There's no reason for Miss Northrop to be in such an emotional state. Perhaps I was the wrong doctor for her. You certainly were. You certainly were. I tried my best. Your best wasn't good enough. Not good enough, Kildare. Not good enough. Do you understand? Yes, I quite understand. Miss Northrop, I promise you won't have to see Dr. Kildare again. Is that better? Much better. You know, there's no reason for you to remain in your bed. As your doctor, I recommend that you get around a little. No. I don't want even you to see me in my condition. Oh, don't want you to go outside this room. I just want you to be comfortable here. Warm? Why not sit over near the window? I won't leave my bed. You mean you don't have the courage? You wouldn't even do it if you were alone. You said I didn't have to listen to him, Dr. Gillespie. That's right. Kildare, you'll report to my office when we've finished here. All right, Doctor. And don't you ever dare to accuse Miss Northrop of not having courage. If and when she wants to go to the window, I am sure she'll do so. Yes. Yes. I think I'd like to go there now. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. Uh, there. Now we'll just push you over here where you can get a little fresh air. There. Now, how does the outside world look to you? Going on as usual, just as you remember it? Yes. Everything just as I... It's horrible. Horrible. Well, Take me back to my bed. What's the matter? Those girls playing tennis. I can't stand it. Well, Kildare, isn't that blonde girl down there Evelyn Williams? Evelyn Williams? Yes, yes. Don't you remember? Evelyn Williams. Yes. Yes, I do remember. Kildare, where are you going? I think I may have found an answer to that problem, Dr. Gillespie. I'm going to see Evelyn Williams. <laughs> yes. You may have found an answer, Kildare. <laughs> <laughs> No. I've told you I don't want to see anyone. You're no longer my doctor. Why do you keep coming back to torment me? It's only a social visit from someone who has a lot in common with you. Really? Evelyn Williams, I'd like you to meet Marjorie Northrup. Hello, Marjorie. How do you do? This is the girl you saw playing tennis on the court under your window. I can't see that we have anything in common there, Dr. Kildare. But you play a very good game of tennis, Miss Williams. Thank you. I was doing quite well up to three years ago. Almost made the finals in the women's thing. And then I had to learn all over again. Oh? What happened? Oh, I had an accident. An automobile accident. You did? Mm -hmm. That's what happened to me. Yes, Evelyn was a mighty lucky girl. She was out of the hospital and around again in no time. I've often thought how fortunate I was not to lose both legs. What, what did you say? Oh, I... I'm sorry. I shouldn't have mentioned it. I guess was You mean you actually have... Why? I don't believe it. This is another one of your tricks, Dr. Kildare. No, believe me, it isn't, Miss Northrop. Although Evelyn certainly would fool anybody. Oh, I'm very flattered that you seem surprised. But... Well, I'll show you. Here. Look. Oh. It is. It is. Oh, Margie, I understand. 
I was doubtful at first, too, and then amazed, just as you are. Now I'm only very, very grateful. And you play tennis as well as before? Mm -hmm. Almost. I dance and ride, too. Oh, that's wonderful. Do you suppose... Do you think that I... That you could do the same? Certainly. It only takes a great desire and a little strength of will. And maybe more courage than I have. Courage? Maybe. But I just got lonesome trying to hide from people. And then one day I took stock of myself. People wear glasses and they aren't ashamed. My best friend Alice wears a hearing aid and she's perfectly normal. So I said to myself, what have I got to lose? Well, here I am. Do you suppose you could teach me to walk? I'd be very happy to. But there's someone who could teach you much better than I if you'd allow him to. Allow him to? Oh, of course I will. Who is it? Dr. Kildare. Oh. Dr. Kildare? Yes, Miss Northrup. You've asked me so many times to try. I think I'd like to now. Good. Evelyn, would you help us? Oh, of course, Doctor. Marjorie's very simple. Yeah. There we are. Now, stand up. Oh, I can't. Evelyn, help me. You'll need no more help now. Stand up. I am... I am standing. Now, walk slowly toward me. I can't. I can't. Walk. You've been walking all your life. You have two legs just as you always had. Walk. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I knew I could. Now, now, you did fine for the first time. I'll never make it never. I wasn't meant to walk again. <laughs> I can't wait all day for this party of yours to come off till there. Mason should be along any minute, Dr. Gillespie. Well, I feel like a fool sitting here in the waiting room of my own hospital. They'll be sending me out on an ambulance call if I don't look out. Right, here he comes now. Dr. Kildare, I rushed right over as soon as I got your message. Is there something wrong with Marjorie? Not a thing in the world, Mr. Mason. And by the way, I'd like you to meet Dr. Gillespie, our chief of staff. Oh, how do you do, sir? Uh, how do you do, young man? Uh, Dr. Kildare here is treating us to one of his dramatic finishes. Mm. Has Marjorie asked to see me, Dr. Kildare? Yes, she has. Oh, that's wonderful. May I go in? That won't be necessary. She's coming down the corridor to meet you now. Marjorie. Look, look she's walking. Alone. Will. Oh, Will. Marjorie. Still there? Yes, Doctor. Don't stand there gaping like an idiot. Come on, we've got work to do. Of course, Dr. Gillespie, of course. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Dr. Kildare, calling Dr. Kildare, report to the fifth floor. Well, what are you waiting for, Kildare? Well, I thought I'd like to show you a little present I just received from Miss Northrop. She sent you a present? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Girl must be ill again. Read the inscription. <laughs> to Dr. Kildare, with gratitude. Marjorie Northrup. <laughs> Very impressive. She made one mistake. Mistake? Yes, it should have read to Dr. Gillespie with gratitude. What in the world would she be grateful to me for? You cured her. Ah, you're talking nonsense, Kildare. You planted Evelyn Williams in that tennis court, and you made sure Miss Northrup saw her. Now, see here, Kildare. That's a pack of lies. Who told you a thing like that? See you later, Dr. Gillespie. 
Nosey. Nosey Parker, that's who it was. Oh, wait till I get my hands on that woman. Nosey! Nosey! Where are you? You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. The story of Dr. Kildare is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture, That Foresight Woman, starring Errol Flynn, Greer Garson, Walter Pitchin, Robert Young, and Janet Lee. The program was directed by William P. Russo, with original music composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. <laughs>